So the case is a midwife who, if you, I have several videos about it on the second channel, but if you want to go like get caught up, you can. But in general, like overview, it's a person who had had a previous cesarean delivery and had distrust of hospitals and wanted to have a home birth and was pregnant with a breech baby. VBAC should not be a home midwife delivery. Breach should not be a home midwife delivery. Neither of those things on their own should happen at home with a midwife. Those things put together absolutely shouldn't happen on their own, period, at home. And then when you add in the footling breach, that's even worse. Okay, so that's what happened. And then the baby died. And the case is brought by the state against the midwife. The parents did not choose to do that. There's no sound here. It's not me. State may proceed. State your name and spell your last name for the record. Uh, David L. Hurd, H-U-R-D. How are you currently employed? Uh, frame houses right now. Are you retired from the Omaha Fire Department? Yes. Okay. When did you retire? Uh, August 7th, 2022. 21. Right. 2021. Congratulations. How long were you with the Omaha Fire Department? Uh, 23 years and eight months. Prior to being at the Omaha Fire Department, did you have other um, fire department experience? I was on the Millard Fire Department for seven years. Okay. And then did that actually merge with the Omaha Fire Department? Um, okay. So Dr. Blue giving us all the good information. Um, criminal case with jury. Conviction requires all 12 jurors to vote in favor of a conviction. In civil cases, it's based on preponderance of evidence. Only needs to be 51% or more thoughts of guilt instead and beyond reasonable doubt or unanimous. Okay. That makes sense. I just don't... I Appropriate time to do an episiotomy. I, I don't know. Like, I just... To me, if the midwife was trained to do an episiotomy, why'd she have to ask for shears um, from somebody else? I think the appropriate time was either when she thought she could make a difference by doing the smelling maneuver, S-M-E-L-L-I, -L -L that's what, what I was showing you where you grab the face, flex the head, um, if she needed more space at that point. But I was confused at why like she wouldn't have done that earlier on if it was really an hour between this being recognized and calling, but then suddenly she wants to do it. She's trained to do it. It's fine for her to do it, but also she doesn't even have the equipment to do it. And why would you have not done it earlier? That's when it would have helped. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. I hardly ever have to do an episiotomy. Um, my hands are, my fingers are long and hypermobile and thin, and I don't know. I don't ever cut episiotomies for space. I'm sure that someday at some point in my career, that would have to happen, but um, we, she is incompetent. I would agree with that. In my opinion, don't sue me. Yeah, Miller uh, merged with Omaha in 1998. Okay. So how many total years did you serve with the fire department? Around 30. Okay. At some point, did you become a paramedic? Yes. Tell the court about your paramedic training. What exactly does it take to become a paramedic? Um, you got to go through, you got to take it like an EMT quiz to see if you're qualified for it right off the bat. And then if you pass that, then you go on to the paramedic. It's like a year of training. You go through classroom training, and then you do clinical stuff, like you go to the hospitals. So a year of training, are you literally just training for a year? You're not, you're not, you're not going out and doing firefighters? Yeah, we're still doing, you're still firefighter doing firefighter stuff. firefighter stuff, but the training for paramedic takes a year to get it all done? Roughly a year. Okay. And you said sometimes you go to hospitals? Yeah, we do clinicals. Okay. Like we work in the ER, and then start IVs and stuff, practice. All right. And I assume that's under the care, under the supervision of a doctor? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. He looks so bored. I know he's probably stressed and doesn't want to be there, but he just looks, he comes across as just like so incredibly bored. Like he's going, my God, I have so many houses I could be framing today. Once you get your paramedic, is it a license? Yes. Um, once you get your paramedic license, do you have to do ongoing training to maintain that license? Yes. What's the ongoing training look like? Um, I just like the department has us do yeah, certain non, like ALS. Non-nurse midwives would have training in episiotomy, I would assume. I don't know, actually, I'm not sure, but I'm sure that that wouldn't be, at least like here in New Zealand, midwives can do episiotomies. It's not like it's hard. I would never do an episiotomy without injecting numbing medicine, unless there was like a true pants on fire emergency and I, the patient gave me permission to do that, but. Stuff, cardiac, get to have so many hours. I think it's it, maybe roughly 40 hours. Every two years. And ALS is that advanced life support? Yes. 
And I assume since you've retired, your paramedic's license has now lapsed? It should have. Okay. Maybe in January. All right. Not looking to recertify at this point. There's no need for it now. Okay. During your paramedic, either the initial training or ongoing training throughout your career, have you ever tra received training specific to dealing with um, birth, childbirth? We go through it, yes. What kind of training do you receive? Um, just like um, if their heart stops and stuff like that. So you get to how to deliver it. How, how's that training done? Do you have to observe babies being born in the hospital and get on that? Um, when we went through paramedic class, we did. Okay. But since that, once we're out, we don't usually. Okay. During your time as a paramedic, do you recall if you've ever had to deliver a baby? Prior to being at the Omaha Fire Department, maybe roughly forty hours. Sorry, I'm every two years. ALS something. is that advanced life support? Yes. And I assume since you retired, your paramedic's license has now lapsed. It should have. Okay. Maybe in January. All right, not looking to recertify. I'll fix the no speed report. once I've okay. heard what I was looking During your paramedic, either the initial training or ongoing training throughout your career, have you ever received training specific to dealing with um, birth, childbirth? We go through it, yes. What kind of training do you receive? Um, just like um, if their heart stops and stuff like that. So you get How to deliver it. How, how's that training done? Do you have to observe babies being born in the hospital? And, you know, on that um, when we went through paramedic class, we did. Okay. But since that, once we're out, we don't usually. Okay. During your time as a paramedic, do you recall if you've ever had to deliver a baby? I've been involved probably with three, were but they, they were usually out by the time I got there. Yeah, that's what the typical experience of any EMT is going to be. I've been to a few deliveries. Most of the time the baby is born before I get there or soon after. It's very unusual for them to be involved in a delivery where they actually have to do anything other than help transport the patient. And when they observe deliveries, I've had plenty of EMT students with us. We train them like that. We say, if somebody's calling you because they're having a baby out in the field, then almost always, all you need to do is facilitate getting them to us when the baby comes out, skin to skin, keep it warm. Here's basic resuscitation. You're not generally teaching them anything more than that because you shouldn't have people having babies that need assistance like that if they've just suddenly accidentally gone into labor. Okay. One was with another paramedic, but I was driving the engine then. So you've responded to babies being born and, and you arrived and the baby's already there? Yeah. So are those pretty uneventful in the sense that it was a normal birth? Yeah, seemed like it. All right. And the babies were okay? Mm-hmm. And so, is that yes? Yes. And so was mom? Yes. Okay. All right. I want to direct your attention to June 15th. 2019, were you out working as an Omaha uh, firefighter paramedic on that date? Yes. Do you recall being dispatched to 4826 Baldy? Well, I believe that's the address. All right. Um, do you recall being responded going that day to an uh, incident where there was a maternity issue? Yes. Okay. Now, you as a paramedic, were you also the captain? Yes. Okay. Were you the lead person then? Were you the highest ranking individual on this call? Yes. Okay. And what role do you have when you're the captain? Are there special duties you have to? Do? Um, usually on the squad, we alternate runs, and that, that run was my run. Who do you alternate with? The other guy on the squad. The other paramedic? The other paramedic, yes. Who was that that night? Matt Carroll. Okay. So by alternate, meaning one person's in charge of the call, and then the next time around the next person's in charge yes. of the call? Yes. Likewise, is that how you do your reports? The person in charge of the call is going to be the one that writes the main report? Yes. yes. Right. What did you, information did you have in route? Uh, dispatch is a maternity case. And then additional information in route was that the feet were starting to come out. 25-year-old female is full term. Okay. Um, when you learned the feet were coming out, is that what you learned or did you learn that the baby was breech? What did you actually learn? When? What did you actually learn? Did you actually hear feet are coming out or did you get the words breech? What, what information did you have? We just heard the feet were coming out okay. at dispatch. What did you think when you learned that? Uh, it might not be good. Okay. Why do you say that? Because usually the head delivers first. Is, is a baby being born breach considered a pretty serious situation yes. for you as a paramedic? Yes. Did you I can't get over his demeanor. Again, I know he's trying to be calm and he's probably nervous and doesn't want to be there, but he's just, he cracks me up. Like, yeah, I mean, it's not usually like that. Don't really, don't really want to see that. Not exactly what you, you know, had on your bingo card for a Tuesday in November. Did you receive any specific training about helping deliver a breach baby? Not really, just we're supposed to load and go. Okay. Why do you say load and go? There's not much we can do for the baby. Okay. 
And is that just in a breach situation or any childbirth situation? Mostly in a breach. If it's a normal delivery, it just depends what happens. I mean, if they're not breathing, then. If you're there on a normal delivery and it looks like the baby's getting ready to actually come out, are you going to try we'll to get stop, that baby yeah, to we'll stop and get ready to deliver it. Okay. All right. So when you arrived, um, what happened next? Uh, we arrived and we were met at the front door by a male, like he was holding a child. He directed us up the steps. Who was first up the steps? Do you remember? I think it was me. Okay. What did you observe when you were up the steps? I went to the top of the steps and there was a patient to the left of me. She was on all fours. Was that the mom? Yes. Okay. What did you see next? Uh, there was another lady there. She was holding the baby. The baby was all the way out except for the head. Okay. Um, how was the woman holding the baby acting? Mm. I, don't know, I wouldn't say she was panicking a whole lot, but she wasn't hysterical or anything, but okay. she was concerned. How about the mom? I think she was just crying. Okay. Did you see anybody else up there? At that time, no. I was okay. just focused on the baby. What happened next? Um, <clears throat> I think I said we probably better get going. This just doesn't look good. Did you ask her what was, inquire what was going on, or did you try to get information about what had happened so far? Yeah, I think I asked what her relationship was here. It kind of reminds me of my dad, where I think, like, literally the world could be on fire. It's like that meme where they're like, this is fine. Everything's fine. I said, we probably better get going. <laughs> And did I'm you learn sure. what the relationship was? Not for sure. I didn't know if somebody might have said midwife. I don't know. Okay. Did you get the impression the woman holding the baby was someone there trying to help with the delivery? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What'd you observe next? Uh, I don't know. After I said we probably should get going, I don't know if she said maybe let's try one more thing. And then she asked for, I thought she said it, she asked for a scalpel. When you say try more, one more thing, were you doing, what was I she trying to do? Manipulating the baby a little more, see if we get it out before we moved her again. Right. Just one more time to. And, and did you try out. to do that? I think I assisted. Okay. And what do you think you, what do you, what do you think you I did? just held the baby. I don't know what she was okay. All right. trying to do. So you say she wanted to try one more thing and you think she asked for a scalpel? Yeah. Okay. Then I, well, she didn't get one or we didn't have one. And then I heard her ask for some scissors. Okay. Did she say scissors or did she say trauma scissors? Scissors. Okay. Um, do you have scissors? Yeah. We Cutting an episiotomy with a scalpel sounds like such a terrible idea. If you, like, imagine what I was showing you earlier. Um, and there, they've already said there was no room to do anything. So, you know, this is the cervix. So you've got most of this baby probably till about right here, still inside and everything's tight right here. So if you are like really having difficulty even manipulating because there's no space, how are you going to safely cut an episiotomy with a scalpel without cutting the baby? Like, I just you can't like i wouldn't cut an episiotomy with a scalpel in the best of situations with a vertex or head first baby i don't understand how you would try to do that safely in this setting without causing serious injury to one or both of your patients we have trauma scissors what are trauma scissors they're uh they get like an end on them for safety and they usually cut clothes off with them Show you. Is it a 98? Um, she cut scissors? that with okay. trauma shears, like like clothing scissors. You say end on for safety. What do you mean end for safety? Like you can't puncture anything with it. It's like rounded. Are they specifically designed not to cut into skin? Um, I suppose you could if you wanted to, but they're designed. Okay. What they're talking about now is trauma shears. They probably looked like that. This is probably the most common ones you see. Okay. <laughs> I'm not cutting an episiotomy with that. No, thank you. Hard pass. Scalpel would be difficult as well. What generally you would use is curved mayos or episiotomy scissors. Um, you would like to have real episiotomy scissors like this, and they are blunt on the end here, but sharp and curved for um, making sure that you would hold like the curve where it wouldn't go into the head of the baby or get anywhere where it shouldn't be. Sometimes we don't have real episiotomy scissors, and you can also use 
uh, what we call curved mayos or curved sims and they're kind of the same so they just don't have like the protective bubble on the end but that not puncture skin um, did you get the impression when she was asking for the scissors that she knew what she was doing or what were you thinking when, when i have an idea if she's asking for scissors for some reason that she had some medical training what did you think she was going to do or did you have any idea not, not for sure but I, she might be trying to cut the peritoneum i think because that's the only other thing you could do so what okay um peritoneum is the lining visceral lining of an organ <laughs> so he meant perineum but they're similar words that's okay so, what happened i'm sorry i didn't mean to talk over you what, what happened next then after you gave her the scissors um we heard a scream which came from the mother and then after that i think we just got her loaded up and went because okay. the baby didn't respond to anything it stayed the same okay um could you see what she did with the scissors not really she was kind of in front of me i was kind of holding the baby off to the side did you see anybody else up there i did not okay um at some point of course that you had other the other paramedic matt carroll was up there correct mm -hmm. is that yes yes okay and at some point did the other firefighters come to the top as well they were probably in the hallway okay so um after that did you um well, first I should say, do you recognize the woman who was using the scissors? Do you recognize her today? If you don't, that's fine, but... Oh, I could okay, tell could. you what she looked like. Too long ago? Yeah. Or didn't get a good look? Maybe? I didn't get a good look at her. All right. <laughs> now, were you directing the scene? If you're the captain and it's your call, are you giving directions to people? Somewhat. Okay. What do you mean by somewhat? Um, I'd ask for stuff, like the equipment. I'd ask for what we needed. Okay. But Matt was there, too. He was kind of... We kind of worked together. Okay. Um, do you know who handed her the scissors? No. Did, it, did you hand her more than, was more than one pair handed to her? I don't believe so. Okay. All right, so after that, you decided you need to get her to load it up and out of there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what did you do to get that affected? Uh, we got a bot. It's an orange thing. It's like a flexible stretcher. Okay. We got her on that, and then we took her down the stairs. How quickly was that bot able to get up the stairs? I think we took it up when we went. We usually take it up when we go. Okay. Um, how was she loaded up on the stretcher? I think we laid her on her back. Um, what, did you do anything to support the baby? I kind of held the baby as we went down the stairs okay. the best I could. Is that important to do? Yes. Why is that? To keep control of the neck. Now, were you paying all attention to where the cord was at at this point? No. I didn't see it. You didn't see the cord? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did, you, did you take her down feet first or head first? I want to say feet first. Okay. Um, what did you do once you got downstairs? Took her out the door and put her on the stretcher. And did you get her up in the squad? Then we took her to the squad. Did you, um, is it typical to start IVs when you put people into an yes. ambulance? Why do you do that? In case we gotta give them some fluid or medications. Okay. Once you get an IV in, is that something that the hospital personnel then can use your same IV that you started? Yes, yep. Were you able to give her an IV or did she refuse? She refused one. Okay. Did she say why she was refusing? She just had a bad experience okay. some other time. So in light of the fact she refused that IV, did you force IV or did you? No, we can't force it on them. Okay. Um, once you got in the squad, did you do some other efforts to try to get her to deliver before? I fully understand she has medical trauma, but it is so odd to me that they cut an episiotomy and she was either fine with that or not asked about that by her midwife, and then she wouldn't have an IV place like it's fine that's probably not integral to making a difference in the outcome here but it's just it's very odd you were driving we, said, away. we thought we will try to see if she can push one more time and see if it'll come out or not but what did you do to help the push did you um help lift her legs or put her into any position to get her to at push? that time i think we just had her try to push put her legs up and then had her push you did put her legs up had her do it had her do it okay yeah. and did that work okay um, did you do anything to try to get oxygen to the baby uh normally put a non-rebreather or some airway down there by the area where the baby is, just to get it a little oxygen if we can. Okay. You didn't see the cord? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did, she, did you take her down feet first or head first? 
I want to say feet first. I'll turn the speed down in a what second. What did you do when you got downstairs? This again, I keep took getting it up the door, distracted. put it on the stretcher. I, like, listen to it did you get up in the squad? Let me take it to the squad. Did you, um, is it typical to start IVs when you put people into yes. the ambulance? Why do you do that? In case we got to give them some fluid or medications. Okay. Once you get an IV in, is that something that the hospital personnel then can use your same IV that you started? Yes. Yep. Were you able to give her an IV or did she refuse? She refused one. Okay. Did she say why she was refusing? She said a bad experience okay. some other time. So in light of the fact she refused that IV, did you force IV or did you? No, we can't force it on. Okay. Once you got in the squad, did you do some other efforts to try to get her to deliver before you were driving we away? We thought we'd, we'll try to see if she can push one more time and see if it'll come out or not. But what did you do to help with the push? Did you um, help lift her legs or put her into any position to get her to push? At that time, I think we just had her try to push, put her legs up, and then had her push. You did put her legs up? Had her do it. Had her do it, okay. And did that work? Okay. Um, did you do anything to try to get oxygen to the baby? Uh, normally, we put a non rebreather or some airway down there by the area where the baby is just to get a little oxygen if we can. Okay. And at that point, the head was still inside of mama, yes. is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, all right. So, head to the hospital. Did it take a while? Do you recall? I'm not, I don't know how long we, uh, that's a few roadblocks we ran into. There was construction in the area. What did you do on the way to the hospital back there? I just tried to. I think it's fascinating that this baby is breech out to presumably here ish out of the pelvis, like out of the vagina to probably here at least. Um, and nobody's feeling if the cord has pul pulsation like um that i mean the midwife really should have been doing that um and maybe she did and i but nobody's commented on like at what point was the cord pulsing versus not because that's a marker of the baby's heartbeat and also like you're you've got delivered to the point where you could hear the heartbeat it's odd that nobody's talked about that. Maintain what we could, keep okay. the baby warm and held it. Keep the baby warm? Yeah. How do you do that? We put blankets around it. Okay. What, um, at some point, was the baby able to deliver? As we... Somebody asked um, about the oxygen. They said they put it down, like, between her legs as a non-rebreather, which is just a mask. That's not going to do anything. Um, and they might have been, like, hoping... The baby would come out and then it would be right there. I'm not sure, but. We turned on uh, off Saddle Creek and going up Farnham to Med Center. I think Matt had an idea. Just put her legs up as far as you could. They kind of pushed them up and then it delivered. Okay. And so had the, had an idea of me going to help actually extend her legs up? Yeah, okay. as far did, as they could get them. And is that what they did? Yep. And what happened? The baby delivered. Okay. How did the baby look? As we were going to the hospital, it had good color. But as we were, this time went on, the extremities start turning blue. Is that a pretty serious thing to see that? Yes. Okay. What does that mean? It's not getting oxygen. Okay. So when the baby was delivered, how did the baby look? Bluish. Okay. Um, was the baby breathing? No. Okay. What did you do? Start CPR. And by CPR, what do you mean? Just, just compressing his chest. We just grab it around the thing and use our thumbs to So it's small, it. so it's not like we see with adults, you're literally no, just using use your thumbs? Use our thumbs. Yep. Okay. You don't have any, um, <clears throat> I don't know, it's a manual thing, you don't have any equipment that does no. CPR for no. a baby? No. All right. Um, what about the umbilical cord? You're trained to cut those umbilical cords, isn't that right? Yes. So did you cut the umbilical cord? No. Why did you not do that? At the time, I thought that was the only survival thing it had since it's been, I didn't want to cut it right away. Okay. Felt like the whole Yeah, I mean, I think that was definitely the right decision. Why would you spend time cutting the cord? It might be the only way that there's any oxygen flowing to the baby at that point if it's even pulsing. And if it's not pulsing, then why do you need to cut it? It's not important at all. Hopefully maybe the baby could still some get some- nutrients and oxygen from the mother. Okay. Um, did you do anything? Did you, um, was it umbilical cord beating at all? Do you recall? I don't recall. Okay. Um, and so sounds like that happened fairly quick before you were getting her at the hospital? Yes. It's still odd to me that nobody's checked to see if the baby has a heartbeat. Like, at any point in this, did they say, like, oh, we felt for pulsation in the cord? And, you know, I'm sure this is an alarming situation for everybody involved, but isn't that the EMT's job? Like, why is nobody commenting on the, whether or not they checked for a pulse? Once you got to the hospital then, what'd you do? Uh, we unloaded the stretcher. Uh, nurses met us at the... As we backed in, they met us outside, right at the doors. And then we, uh, I don't know if they, I think we went into the room and then they cut the cord right away and took the baby to a different room. At that point, are you f finished with your role once you turn over to time. the hospital? Yeah, I just got to do the report after that.
Did all these events occur in Douglas County, Nebraska? Yes. Thank you, sir. There's going to be some cross examination, <clears throat> I think. What's that? Oh, oh, sorry. No worries. Could you please describe the training you received in responding to a breach birth? The training? All we know is that it's serious, and if it doesn't come out, we just got to get going as soon as we can. Fair to say that the training you receive in birth in general is relatively minimal compared to training in other types of medical interventions? Yes. And is that because your scope of practice doesn't include many interventions that you can use when assisting at birth? Um, I, just, I would say that we don't come around it that often. It's not as often as one of our calls. Sure. Would you agree with me that, or excuse me, are you familiar with the Nebraska EMS model protocols? Somewhat. At the time that you were working as a paramedic, would you have been familiar? Yeah. And do those protocols more or less describe the best practices that EMTs and paramedics um, should, should do in various situations? Yes. And would you agree with me that if you responded to an uncomplicated labor, that those protocols might include preparing for a birth on the scene? Yes. And would you agree with me that the protocols for responding to a complicated delivery like breech birth, um, that the best practice in that situation is to transfer? Someone said attorney man bun looks like Vosh or Vosh, the streamer, and I can't unsee it now, so. You're on the second channel. Make sure you subscribe. If you're subscribed to my main channel, you might not be subscribed to MDJ Clips. So make sure you're subscribed down below so you don't miss out on any of the fun.